In this video, we'll show you how you can use precipitation reactions to help identify what ions are present in an unknown sample of an ionic solution. Identifying ions in a solution is called qualitative analysis. Let's do a little experiment. We're given three test tubes, A, B, and C. One of the test tubes contains strontium or SR2 plus ions. One test tube contains silver or AG plus ions and the other one contains calcium or Ca2 plus ions. Our job is to find out which is which. While we're doing this experiment, we need to have the solubility table handy. Make sure you have one of these with you as you go through the video. We'll add a little table here to record our results. The solutions we add to the test tubes are called reagents. We obtain a solution of sodium chloride. For this experiment, we'll consider it just a source of chloride or Cl minus ions, and we'll add it to the table as one of our reagents. We'll add the chloride solution dropwise to test tube A. Chloride did not form a precipitate with the ion in test tube A. So we'll just write a dash here for chloride in test tube A in our table. Now we'll take the pipette out and refill it and move it over to test tube B. Now we'll add the chloride solution to test tube B. Watch what happens in the test tube. A precipitate is formed. This is a compound with low solubility. To record this result, we write PPT for precipitate in the cell for chloride added to test tube B. We'll take the pipette out of test tube B, refill it, and bring it over to test tube C. Now we'll add the chloride solution to test tube C. Watch the test tube to see if a precipitate forms. This time we didn't form any precipitate. So we'll write a dash in the table here for chloride in test tube C. The three ions in the test tube are strontium, silver, and calcium. And only the solution in test tube B formed a precipitate with chloride. We look up chloride on the left side of the solubility table. And we see that it forms a low solubility compound with Ag+. Cl- is soluble with all cations other than Ag+, Pb2+, or Cu+. That would include strontium and calcium. So because the solution in test tube B was the only one that formed a precipitate with Cl-, test tube B must contain the silver ions. So what we can do is write Ag plus here by the B in the table. Since we know that test tube B contains silver ions, we don't need to test the solution with any more reagents. So we'll just color these cells in for test tube B. Now we need to find which test tubes strontium and calcium ions are in. Now we look at the solubility table to see if there are any negative ions or anions that would form a precipitate with only one of the strontium or calcium. We see that sulfate would not be suitable because sulfate forms a low solubility compound or precipitate with both calcium and strontium. Similarly, sulfide would not be suitable either because calcium and strontium are both soluble with sulfide. So neither of these would form a precipitate. Now we'll look at hydroxide, OH-. We see that strontium is soluble with hydroxide, but calcium is not in the soluble group. So it must be in the all others or low solubility group. So in other words, calcium ions form a precipitate with hydroxide, whereas strontium ions do not form a precipitate with hydroxide. So we'll add a solution of sodium hydroxide to test tubes A and C. NaOH is a source of the hydroxide, or OH- ion. And the one that forms a precipitate with the OH- is the one that contains the calcium ions. Now we rinse out the test tubes, A and C, and refill them with the original solutions they had. We'll remove the test tube B because we already know that it contains silver ions. 
We'll fill the pipette with any OH solution and bring it over to test tube A. We'll slowly add NaOH or OH to test tube A. Look at the solution in the test tube. We observed that OH formed a precipitate with the solution in test tube A. So we'll write PPT in this cell for hydroxide in test tube A. Now we'll try hydroxide in test tube C. We'll remove the pipette and refill it with NaOH. Now we'll move it over to test tube C and add the hydroxide solution. And we saw that no precipitate formed when we added hydroxide to test tube C. So we'll add a dash here in the cell for OH- in test tube C to indicate no precipitate. So hydroxide formed a precipitate in test tube A and not in test tube C. And the table tells us that hydroxide forms a precipitate with calcium ions, but not with strontium ions. Therefore, test tube A is the one that contains calcium ions. So we'll write Ca2 plus in here by A. Now remember, we were told that one of the test tubes contains strontium ions, one contains silver, and one contains calcium ions. We have determined that the calcium ions are in test tube A and the silver ions are in test tube B. So this must mean that the strontium ions are in test tube C. But to give us more evidence, we can check it with another precipitation reaction. We see from the table that strontium forms a low solubility compound, or precipitate, with sulfate. Since we already know what's in test tubes A and B, we'll just add sulfate to test tube C. We'll fill a pipette with sodium sulfate solution, which is a source of the sulfate ion, SO4 2 Since we already know what's in test tubes A and B, we'll just add sulfate to test tube C. As you saw, we do get a precipitate in test tube C when we add sulfate. So we can mark PPT in the cell for sulfate added to test tube C. Because strontium ions form a low solubility compound with sulfate, the presence of a precipitate confirms that the test tube could contain strontium ions. So we can now record here that test tube C contains strontium ions. So to summarize the answer to our original question, we can say that test tube A contains calcium ions, test tube B contains silver ions, and test tube C contains strontium ions. Let's do an example question dealing with qualitative analysis. An unknown solution is tested with three different reagents, and the results are shown here in the table. And we have to choose the correct answer from this list. The first thing we do is dissociate or break up all of the reagent compounds into their individual ions, like this. We won't worry about the number of each kind, just the ions. And we also dissociate the ions in the possible answers down here. And this is what we get. Now looking at the solubility table, the alkali metal ions, or group 1 ions, form soluble compounds with all negative ions. So these ions are always spectator ions. The most common of these are sodium and potassium ions. These are all with spectator ions in solubility questions. Another positive ion that is soluble with everything, and therefore a spectator, is the ammonium ion, NH4+. And a negative ion, or anion, that is soluble with everything, and always a spectator, is nitrate, NO3-. Compounds that contain H plus ions are acids, and they're also soluble. However, we don't routinely exclude H plus ions because they do affect solubility of some compounds. We'll say more about this later. Keep in mind that you can discard all spectator ions in solubility problems, including all alkali metal ions and nitrate ions. By far the most common spectator ions you will see are sodium, potassium, and nitrate. We start by discarding the spectator ions in the reagents. These compounds all have a nitrate ion, 
which we discard, like this. And we can also discard the spectator ions in the possible answers. These are the sodium and potassium ions. So we're left with these ions here. Ions that remain after we discarded spectators are called active ions. So these are the four active ions in the possible answers. And these are the three active ions in the reagents. What we'll do now is simplify the table by just including the active ions. So it looks like this. Now we'll reorganize things a bit. We'll set up the table and see which of these combinations agree with the result. We'll check each possible answer one at a time. When we find one that will give the exact results that are observed, that will be the correct answer. We'll start with OH-. We'll check hydroxide and SR2 plus in the table and see if the predicted result matches the actual observed result. The table says hydroxide and SR2 plus form a soluble compound, so there should be no precipitate. The actual result is a precipitate. So since the reaction of hydroxide with strontium does not match the prediction, we'll put an X in this cell. The correct answer has to match all the predictions. So we know now that OH- or NaOH cannot be the correct answer. Therefore, we'll color in these cells as we're now finished with OH-. We'll also mark answer A with an X, as we now know that A is not the correct answer. Next we'll move on to carbonate, CO3-. We see what the solubility table predicts about the combination of strontium and carbonate ions. Strontium is not in the top group, so it must be one of all others. The table says strontium carbonate should have low solubility. So this combination should form a precipitate. Looking down at the results for this combination, we see that we did get a precipitate. So in this case, the prediction from the table checks out with the actual result. So we'll write a check mark in this cell. Now we'll check the table's prediction about silver and carbonate. It says that silver carbonate has low solubility, so it should form a precipitate. And the results show that it does. So we can put a check mark in this cell. Now we'll check the table for magnesium and carbonate. Because magnesium is not in the top group, it must be in the bottom group. Therefore, magnesium carbonate also has low solubility. So a precipitate is also predicted for this combination. But the result of combining these two show that there was no precipitate. So we put an X in this cell indicating that the result is not consistent with the prediction. So we mark an X by answer B, potassium carbonate, or carbonate, to show that this cannot be the correct answer. Now we'll try sulfide, S2-. Here's the section for sulfide on the table. The table predicts that strontium sulfide is soluble, which means there should be no precipitate. The results did show a precipitate, so the unknown solution does not contain sulfide. So C is not the correct answer. By process of elimination, answer D must be correct. The unknown solution would contain the sulfate ion, or sodium sulfate. But we'll just check that with the solubility table. Checking strontium and silver sulfate, the table tells us that both of these have low solubility, so should form precipitates. And the results are consistent with this. So we'll write check marks in here for both of these cells. Now we'll look at the magnesium sulfate. Magnesium is not in the bottom section, so it must be in the top section as one of all others. Therefore, the table predicts that magnesium sulfate is soluble, which means it should not form a precipitate. And our results confirm that the unknown does not form a precipitate with sulfate. Therefore, this cell would also have a check mark to indicate that the result is consistent with the prediction by the table. So sulfate has a check mark for each of the reagents, which shows that it is the correct answer. So we can now summarize by saying that according to the results of this experiment, the unknown solution could be sodium sulfate, Na2SO4.